Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord, let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Sing to the Lord. Let's do that again. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. They rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh, let it rise. Let's do another one, shall we? Y'all are in the mood to sing? Oh, two people in the mood to sing? <laughs> All right, good. We'll take it. We'll take it. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. A mighty river through the nations, and young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide you heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen Lord. 
Do you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song? And all the streams flow as one river to wash away our brokenness. And here we see that God, you're moving a time of jubilee. stay a little bit early. <laughs> um, I was just thinking about, man, I don't know how many of you think this way, but man, I would love to see the glory of the Lord. I mean, the first line, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Man, I'd love to see a, a glory. I mean, I've seen glorious things. You know, we live in a glorious world. I mean, there's beautiful things all over the place I couldn't describe. And and I've had many experiences, revelations, and, and interactions with people that were like supernatural. But dang, I would love to see the glory of the Lord like, like Moses did on that mountain. And the trumpets blew and, and the mountain shook. And <laughs> you know, wouldn't that be awesome? The fire came out. Or even like in Solomon's temple, when the, when the glory came in like a cloud, and the priests that were in the temple, they couldn't even stand up. It was so heavy. I mean, I want to see his glory. And even like in Revelation, it says, I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. And I know your head is as white as wool. And I know that your voice, it sounds like waters. Oh, Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching.
with my soul to answer him. They jubilant my feet. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, first of all, for all the veterans that have served in all the, all the military branches, Lord, to fight for our freedom. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, for the freedom that you've given us. We also thank you, Lord, even more so, for the freedom you give us in our hearts because you've come to live there, Lord. We've seen a glimpse of your glory, Lord, but we want to see your full glory, and we just by faith know that one day we will see the full revelation glory of you, Lord. We'll see your eyes as flames of fire. We'll see your head as white as wool, and we'll hear your voice sounding like many waters. Glory, glory, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you bring us from glory to glory because of what you've done in our lives. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. Thank you, worship team. Yes, please, is we get to celebrate Veterans Day. Veterans Day is officially Thursday, this coming Thursday, the 11th. And here at Kapan Missionary Church, we'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our veterans who have served in the armed forces. And you know, of course, you know that freedom is not free. You had, freedom had to be paid for. Jesus paid the full price for our salvation, and he paid it forward for all of us and generations to come. The freedom that we have in America is a result of men and women who served in our armed forces. If it wasn't for the military defending our country, can you imagine we living under a communist rule or a socialist government? To live in America is a freedom that people in other countries would just love to have. That's why they just find any way possible to come into our country because they know the freedom that you have in this country. If you ever had a opportunity to serve in the military, it's a special experience. And I was just talking to Annette, and we both went to Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. And I went, when I went to Lackland, it was a cold February. L learning what it means to, I, 
uh, at basic training was kind of a, a favorite, even to what you go through, but the training is amazing. You learn what it means to defend your country. No one likes to go to the front line and face the enemy. And there are many that didn't make it back, but they went thinking about their loved ones back home, our Ohana and the people back here. They defended their this country with their life, thinking about their loved ones back home. In the Bible, we read that kings had to raise up army to defend the land that the Lord gave them and attack the enemy to reclaim the land that was taken away from them. Lives were lost. It's not free. It came with a price. Today, I would like to honor our veterans who have served in the military. Whether they went to the front line or just supported in different areas of the mission, they were all part of the team. No matter what role that you had, you were part of the military team. They sacrificed their time. And I also honor the spouses that, you know, that of these veterans that went to war and their, their aunt had to stay back. And they had to pray for them and just do all the things that, you know, without their partner. Don't take for granted the freedom that we have today. The flag is special because it represents our country. The men and women who stood up to defend it. And it's time I'd like to call up all the veterans. Anyone who has served in the military, I want you to come up here. Do I call you by name? <laughs> Bob Cook. Robert Barretto, Annette Dembo. If you are here visiting us, yes, please come up. We want to recognize you. I know we also have um, Gordon Yee. He served. We also have PJ. He served. You never know, but there's a lot of people out here that served. You met not a whole, uh, what are, I don't have many years, but come up here. Folks. But this serve, they, they made their time. I mean, you know, this, this uh, PowerPoint was made about three years ago. I like to say that this flag that is on display here in the wall reminds us of our freedom, and it includes the freedom of religion. This flag is special because it was flown on Memorial Day, May 26, 2008. Let me read the certificate that came from that flag. The United States flag was flown in honor of Kappa'a Missionary Church, loving God, living aloha. This US flag was flown for God and country on the 28th day of May, 2008, Memorial Day, above the Camp Slayer, the Criminal Investigation Division in Camp Slayer, Iraq. So this flag is a reminder of our freedom. And then we just don't want to take it for granted. You know, they were thinking about us Kappa Missionary Church in specific, and thank them for our prayer and support. And I just want to present our veterans with just something small. I would shake your hand, but man, thank you. <laughs> Bob Cook, all right, good job. And that them, Bob. Thank you for your service. And sir, your name? Gerald. Gerald? Yeah. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. Wow. Okay.
many of you that are older remember going to school and standing at attention every morning while the flag was being raised at 8 o'clock in the morning then reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and singing God Bless America. Over the years, it has slowly been taken away out of schools to being almost forgotten. I think today, we, as parents, we need to educate our children what it means to live in America and what our flag stands for. Today, we'll be taking communion and Jesus said, do it often in remembrance of me. Jesus didn't want the people to forget what he did at the cross. The flag also serves as a reminder of the freedom that we have today. Just be sure that your children appreciate what we still have today. American history wasn't my favorite subject in high school. But serving in the military made me appreciate what it is to be an American. You know, when we went to basic training as we were ashamed with and that, it says, you know, it was, a, it was a great time. You know, even to what we had to go through, you know, marching in the cold, standing guard duty in the middle of the night, making your bed so that the, the, uh, the blanket is firm where you can drop a quarter and it'll bounce and I know because I had a, a, a room a bed made a little further down that he didn't know how to make a bed so he asked me can you help me make a bed I said yeah I'll help you make a bed and you do my chore in the bathroom so we did it that was the agreement we worked together as a team because the unit that, or the squadron that because one person fills we all get to go out and watch around the field. So it, 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 it's important that we work together as a team to make the mission. I remember we went to uh, physical training through the obstacle course, and I think it was running a mile and a half. And we had a couple of men, uh, men that, that were struggling to make, that, to make it across the line. And I remember that we helping this guy just Come on, we can do it, we can do it. And so we, as a team, we made it across. So serving one another, we learned to serve one another. That's where the sacrifice comes in. And it was a great time of just learning to be disciplined. It doesn't make sense, some things that they tell you, but it's the way to, to learn to do what you're instructed to do. And that's what makes our military strong, the discipline of the men and women. Today's message comes from Galatians 5.13. And if you have your Bible, you can turn to it and bookmark it. It says, you, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Okay, question. Do I have anyone here who has experienced a situation where someone you never met paid for your meal or grocery bill. Wow, awesome. How, what does it feel like just to be able to, to just say somebody talks about you, you know? They didn't ex experience, uh, they didn't uh, want to be acknowledged. You know, a couple of years, uh, let me share my experience. A couple of years ago when I went through the uh, McDonald's drive here, drive through here in Kapas in order to, uh, to order my meal. And I w when I reached the pay window, the cashier said, your order has been paid for by the car I had. I was just caught by some, I, I was just in shock actually. And I didn't even get to acknowledge the car that was in front of me because it had already left the drive through I enjoyed a free meal on the behalf of a generous person. Then I thought oh, I should have made a bigger order, but no, <laughs> but that wouldn't be right. I didn't do anything to deserve, to deserve a free meal. 
someone had the spirit of kindness, and they paid, the, they paid it out of their pocket. They shared with me with what they had. They didn't expect any acknowledgement. Also, once I was in a Safeway market in Lihui, and I was in a checkout line, and an elderly lady uh, didn't have enough money to pay for her for all her groceries, and she started to take some stuff items back out of her package you know, for a credit. But the guy, there was a man that was standing behind her. He told the cashier, "It's okay. You, I will cover it." So the cashier put all her groceries back back in the bag and said, you may go. And he said, it's been taken care of. And the lady was trying to stun and she didn't know what to think. And she was, she left fairly stunned, you know, that something would just, she didn't want, she didn't know what happened, that somebody actually paid for what she did. But it was a show of love and compassion. And I think we need just more of that around here. Now, Jesus paid forward our salvation with his life. He thought about you and I way back then when he went to the cross. We could never afford to pay for, our, to pay for it or buy it. It's a free gift that has eternal value. And it's available to every living human being and that no one should be left without the opportunity to receiving that free gift. We cannot earn our salvation we can, by being good or working hard. It only requires you to believe in him as the son of God and that the God the Father raised him up and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. In Matthew 28, 18, says, Jesus said, all authority has been given in heaven and earth have been given to me. So go and share the gospel message to the ends of the world that no one will be left behind. You know, we are not saved by serving, but we are saved for serving. We are not saved by serving others, but we are saved for serving others. The first basis of serving others is salvation. Paul says, you were called to be free. You cannot serve God until you've been set free by Jesus. It's a prerequisite for serving. So you need to know Jesus because when you serve and knowing Jesus, it makes a whole lot of difference. There's only a small minority of people use their lives to serve others. But Jesus said, if you insist on saving your life, you will lose it. Only those who throw away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. Come Mark 8.35. There are many times that my busy plans serves as an excuse why I'm not available. I have put golfing with friends a higher priority over the call service. I would rather be traveling on the mainland in my motorhome now that I'm retired <laughs> and enjoying the life. But that's not what God called me to do. When God calls you, it's time to move. It's not about, it's, it's just, I am willing to give up the things that I want so that I can please God. Satisfying the desires of the flesh has eternal value, has no eternal value. No matter how hard, how many hours that you put in. I put in, a, I put in, a, 
no matter how many hours that I put in, it's always a joyful experience serving the Lord. Living under the shelter of the Most High is an unbelievable experience. It's like getting adrenaline flowing in your system and you don't want it to stop. You know, the Holy Spirit just works in you and you just, you just bask in it and you just keep on going and going. I mean, it's, it's something that I hope everyone gets to experience. The Holy Spirit driving you, not your flesh. The motivation that we have for serving is love. As Paul says, serve one another in love. This is an important to building a community. First Corinthians 13 talks about love, the importance of love. Love is above all spiritual gifts that a believer that a believer has in Jesus Christ. Serving without love has no value because God is love. And the love of God in you makes all the difference in whatever you do. Any sacrifices you make is meaningless without God's love. God is far more interested in why you are serving others than how you are serving. It means that God is more interested in why He's looking at your hearts why you serve others than how well you serve others. He is always looking at the heart, serving willingly and eagerly out of the love for Jesus and the gratitude for all that he has done for you. I think I'll call up the worship team as we just bring up our closing. Are you... Are you more like Jesus when you're serving others? You know, after washing his disciples' feet, Jesus said, I have given you an example to follow, as I have done for you, according to John 13, 14. Jesus was washing his disciples' feet. What is this? Jesus was washing his master's feet. I'm I'm sorry. Jesus was washing his disciples' feet and was was not meant to be that they are equal. Jesus is still the master and Peter is still the servant. It shows that Jesus is the son of God, yet humbled himself by doing a servant's job. This is an example he set for us as disciples. No matter what your position is, you can help clean up the mess that other people made. It's an act of sacrificial service to others. Have you ever said, this is not my, that's not my job. That's for the other guy to do it. You know, even if you walk around, you see trash in the ground, you pick it up, you put it in the ground. You don't say, oh, it's the janitor's job to pick it up and put it. Out of the abundance of your heart that you go and to be a servant, and just pick it up and put it away. It's a simple act of serving. Now, this past week, um, I enjoyed working with uh, Liz Kunimoto, Stephanie Grisaba, Susan Kubota, Dina Planas, Carolyn Oak. Okasako, uh, Bell Chang. There are ladies who gave up a lot of their time coming here to help put up the decoration for Harvest Fest. And then they came in another day to clean up and put them away. Then this week they came in to put up our I Am Thankful tree. Watching them work together and having fun is what it means to serve with a joyful heart. And I, 
I am just thankful to just watching them put all of this together, to see God working and God's glorifying. They make me look so good, and I get to witness God being glorified. But thank you, ladies, for all that you do. The love of God makes all the difference in whatever we believe in and whatever we say or do. We serve God by serving others. Amen. We will take the morning offering this time, and I'll, I'll ask John Heller to come up and uh, pray for our offering this morning. We have offering bowls that are in the front and also in the back. Good morning. Uh, as I was preparing for this, I, don't, I was <coughs> uh, checking out some principles on giving. There's six uh, biblical pr principles for giving. Uh, one was like give secretly. Gene was talking about that a little bit in his service today. Uh, give generously. That's 2 Corinthians 9.6. Give purposely. That's 2 Corinthians 9.7. Give cheerfully. That's also Corinthians 9.7. Give sacrificially. That's Mark 12, 41, 44. And give proportionately. That's 1 Timothy 1, 6 to 17. Uh, I'd like to focus a little bit on give purposely. It says, the third principle of giving is found in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, where Paul says, each of you must give as you have made up your mind. One with a made, made up mind has come to terms with a heart purposed for giving. This entails planning ahead by deliberately thinking through our giving in advance, even before the act is carried out. Yet we ought not to forget that there exists an act of free will giving that was experienced in the Old Testament. Giving that flows freely and spontaneously from a thankful heart. People gave of their time, talents, and finances, not out of a sense of duty or in anticipation of a promised blessing, but out of a grateful life given by a generous God. Let's pray for our offering. Father God, we just thank you for all your blessings you've given us, Lord. I just ask that uh, you would bless these tithes and offerings that everyone gives today, Lord that you would glorify your kingdom with them, Lord. And just uh, we are so honored that we can give back to you a portion of what you've given us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard this song, and I'm sorry. God is just speaking so much to me. And, um, you know, I think he wanted more than servants. He wanted a... a a kingdom of priests and he wanted a royal priesthood and and there's kind of that sound of that air of you know promotion and everything but but it's so obvious in scripture he never wants you to forget that you're always serving you're always a servant a servant king a servant priest it should be to everybody's benefit that you've been promoted and uh, I mean, I love. I, I looked at this phrase, you know, greater is he that is in me than he that is in me. Once you become a Christian, you're not even greater anymore because the one who's in you is greater. <laughs> and so you're always, should always be aware that um, you are a servant. And so, okay, so the first part of this song is the servant part, and the second part of this song is the king part, and the third part of this song is the priest part. So listen for it. I'm, it's kind of new, but man, it just says, it says everything. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life now is for you. Sing that. Lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. Yes, sir. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. Praise to 
Jesus Christ, High King of Heaven, my King forever. All praise to the Lord Most High. All praise to the One who saved my life. And all praise to Jesus Christ, High King of Heaven, my King forever. Before you, oh, I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down. My whole life now is for you. Oh, 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 taking communion as I get my message together. But we have uh, elements of communion here on the front and you can come up and down, pick up the communion and go back to the seats and we will be taking the elements together. Um, it's a time to reflect on what God has done in your life and giving thanks. And it's a time to also to Repent for the sins that we have you know, in the past. And that we get to be redeemed again by the blood of the Lamb. So as the worship team plays, you can have a come up forward, come to the center, pick up the elements, and then you can return to your seats through the silence. Oh, oh, nani kama kua ma.
praise God the Holy Trinity. Praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise to the King, His throne transcends, His crown and kingdom never end. Now and throughout eternity, I'll praise the One who died for me. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. O Onani Kama Kuama. We'll take our communion at this time. Just a little bit of instructions for for those that are are visiting with us who are not familiar with the uh, the the element. It comes in two parts, and there's a there's a tin uh, film that's over the top. You can separate it and take the bread part out of it. Okay, you got it. So 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 11, 30. Paul writes to the church in Corinth, For I have received from the Lord that which I have delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he, which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take it and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread. In the, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is in the new covenant in my blood. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the juice. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. This concludes our morning service, and we have a benevolent bowl in the back. If you want to make an offering to help those who are in need uh, in the church or in the community. If anyone needs prayer, I'm willing to pray for any individual that, uh, that for whatever reason that you think you need prayer, I'll be willing to pray for you. Worship team, thank you for 
leading us in worship this morning. It was special. It was a special day. Thank you for our audiovisual team, uh, Yoli and Gordon. Most of all, thank you for our veterans who have served this country that we enjoy the freedom of religion. I now release you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Let's go out, love God, and live aloha. All right. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. 